Hello everyone, my name is Annika from ILCT. Firstly, I'd like to thank the Conventus Law Team for featuring our company in this podcast. We are delighted to be a part of it. I would also like to thank Hundina Pa, a Paiwangse Investment Promotion Officer from the BOI, who has agreed to share her expertise with us today. Please allow me to begin by presenting a short introduction of our law firm. ILCT is a full-service law firm which offers legal services in almost every aspect of corporate and commercial laws. We currently have 10 partners and over 70 lawyers, paralegals, specialists, and staff. Our legal practice includes, but is not limited to, corporate and commercial negotiation, banking, securities and finance, factory and real estate, foreign business, capital markets, M&A, fintech, dispute resolution, tax, and intellectual property. ILCT has housed many experts from across the field. Our managing partner, Professor Chaiwat Bunag, is currently registered as one of the top five arbitrators in Thailand. Our other partners, including Kun Palawi Bunag and Kun Supon Bunyanovic, has been listed as one of Thailand's top 100 lawyers by the Asia Business Law Journal. I would now like to give the floor to Kundina Pa to speak more about the topic of long-term residency. Welcome Kundina Pa. Um, we're so delighted to hear about your expertise on the topic of long-term residency. Um, please begin your presentation whenever ready. Okay. Uh, thank you very much ILCT and thank you very much everyone. So I think that today is a lot of people are interested to know about the long-term residence visa, right? Uh, last year, last September, actually last year, uh, Thailand Board of Investment was honored by the Royal Thai government to be one of the agency to do the long-term residence visas. So this one is the newest visa that just coming out from the government. The long-term resident visa is like the relationship that we would like to offer to the foreign communities in Thailand. So we know that for the foreigner to want to come to another country, we want you to feel like home to make it your second home. For those people who already intended to stay long-term here, we would like to su suggest that uh, now we have the long-term residence visa for five, five categories of people who can attend. The last category, of course, is for family. It means that if the four main category is your main people in your family already achieved for the LTR approval and got the LTR status, then the dependents or the family can also join the LTR family to stay long term with the main category. So I believe that you would like to know what is the four main category first, right? Beginning, we just started, so we, we developed from small. We selected from the two groups of people. The first group I will call the wealthy groups is for the people who have the financial freedoms. There are the wealthy global citizens as well as the wealthy pensioner. So we will look at their asset that they have financial freedoms. For the wealthy global citizens, we will look mainly whether they have the asset or the investment in Thailand already. It means that they want to stay in Thailand, they have the investment in Thailand. And then the second group, the pension, of course, a little bit different from normal pension visa. So we will look at the people who have the pensions fund already available for them. They age more than 50 years old. They have the insurance and everything. So the asset that they invest in Thailand can also count as part of the conditions to pass for the wealthy groups. In details, we will have all the detailed lists and maybe show you later. But most, most of the concept, this is for the wealthy groups. Secondly, we have the professional groups. Of course, after COVID, there is a lot of people are there is open the door for people. People like us, we're starting to think that working away from office is almost impossible before COVID. But after COVID, we start to have a trend of people to work remotely. And it's a global trend. So the government is also offered for people who have the employment abroad. And the company allow you to work anywhere and work remotely. So if you have a secure job abroad and you want to come and work anywhere and you choose Thailand as your home office, then yes, you can also apply for work from Thailand's category. 
this one we will check with your incomes and also with your contract with your employer abroad whether it's a very stable and secure uh, employer or not last groups the last group is the combination between the BYs and the and the people abroad like and the company we are working together with a target company we're trying to attract a lot of investment in Thailand so we know that expertise and expert for the highly skilled people are very important so this group we offer the benefits for both the company and also the talents that want to stay in Thailand this is 10 year visa for the people in uh, for the company who, who want to hire the expat in the target industry or the expat who have the expertise in the nine area of expertise that we have list. This type of highly skilled people will be attracted to work and stay long term in Thailand. And this is, I will talk about the benefits of LTR, but only this group that the revenue division also agreed that the income made in Thailand will be have a flat rate of personal income tax of 17% tax rate. So next, I would like to talk about the privilege to be offered the LTR visa holder. Of course, this one is the latest visa just coming out by the government. So we have tried so hard to uh, bridge all the pain point that foreigner has been seen and complain about the visa so far. So this is the 10 year renewal visa. It's a very long term visa. So you only have to come after the checkpoint five year and then reconfirm that you still qualify for the LTR visas and then you will have 10 year visas. Second, the 90 day report it has been extended to one year. I believe that this point is very benefit to all foreigners who have to be very some some people are very worried that they have to do the 90 day report every 90 days so one year uh, report is very long times and then you can travel outside of thailand and come back and then you have already uh, count as a report one year report as well to the immigration police at the airport Secondly, of course, this one you can enjoy the fast track service that international airport in Thailand. This international fast track is the same with BUI visa and the same with smart visa and privilege and other uh, high visa that we have. We already mentioned about 17% personal income tax rates for the highly skilled professional. So this one is the benefits for foreigners who come and work in Thailand. The personal income tax is 17% flat rate. And, they, and you have been exempted for the 4 to 1 Thai, uh, Thai and foreigner employment ratios also. For every type of visa, uh, visa of LTR visa, we also help you facilitate with a digital work permit except the work from Thailand type of course because that one is for the work remotely in Thailand but other kind of uh, other kind of LTR visas then will facilitate you to get the digital work permit from Ministry of Labor so we all know that foreigners who want to work in Thailand we will also help them to get the digital work permit and that digital work permit will be exempted from four ties and one foreigner ratio employment ratio it means that if you've got the LTR then you don't have to go into the line of 4 to 1 employment ratio and also we facilitate you with the digital work permit uh, for the LTR visa holder except the work from Thailand professional type because the intention is for work remotely here so you don't need a work permit okay so yes the government has been incorporated with other government agencies so we work together with immigration bureau ministry of uh, labor department here at the one-stop service center we also if you want if you choose to issue the LTR visa in the country then you can come to our office and then we'll facilitate you escort you to the immigration bureaus and the labor department in order to obtain the LTR visa and digital work permit this one is a free service from the BOI and also if you choose to issue the visa abroad we have the help of Ministry of Foreign Affairs to do the e-visa for you so you can apply through the e-visa system after you got the LTR quality Notification approved uh, can use we will give you the letter of approval and then you can uh, 
go to the system of e visa and then issue the visa anywhere in the uh, in the world. Thank you, Prindina Pa, for that insightful presentation. Um, in order to recap some of the most important aspects, we thought it would be great to ask a few specific questions. So the first question that we wanted to ask is, are there any recent changes in the Thai immigration laws that our viewers might need to know of regarding long-term residency? Okay, let me think. Actually, the visa just announced last year, right? And we have tried to improve the these LTR visas all the time. And these LTR visas, we have the committees, we call the LTR committee, shared by Deputy Prime Minister. Last, last uh, I think not last year, we had the meeting once last year, and then the first quarter of this year, we already had the meeting. And also have amended some of the LTR condition, but this is based on the BOI uh, definition of target industry. We have expanded the target industry to cover uh, more broadly and also add nine area of expertise to the LTR highly skilled visa. So this is the first step of our changes in LTR. And then th definitely there's many more chains coming and we are intended to make a better service and maybe keep all the requirements and the requests from the foreign community to upgrade and then amend the LTR visa to be more serving the purpose of the long-term residents. So the next question is, we were wondering what are the renewable requirements for long-term visa residency? Okay. Normally, it's very easy for the LTR visa holder. After five years that you are holding the LTR visa, then you will ask to reconfirm your positions of the LTR visa holder, depending on each category conditions. You just have to confirm that you will want to stay for the next five years in this long-term residence visa in that category. Give me the example, if you are in the wealthy global citizen, you just confirm your investment, that you have maintained your investment, or you, and you have the global asset of 1 million USD. Then for the highly skilled, you still need to confirm with us that you are still working in the target industry or the area of expertise. For the highly skilled professional, definitely you have to maintain your working with the company that applying together with you on the LTR visa holder. But if you change it, then you have to come to us to reconfirm that the company, your next employer, seamlessly, that you change seamlessly, is still in the target industry or the area of expertise, then you don't have to revoke the LTR visa. The visa can be sustained for the next, uh, for the next five years and then have to renew again. So to follow up on that question earlier, we were wondering in the case of highly skilled type workers, um, if they change companies, would they also have to notify the BOI in this case? Definitely, because for the highly skilled professionals, uh, the digital work permit have to be approved by the BOI and then we will facilitate with the labor department, right? So if we didn't give the notification to the labor department, then they cannot issue the the digital work permit under the LTR visas. So this is why if you want to change the sponsor company or the employee, employer, better uh, notify us first so we will arrange everything and it need to be transferred seamlessly. It's not like you have LTR highly skilled and then you've been off the, uh, off the company for five months and then you want to come back. The LTR visa will be removed if you have the gap, the gap period. Moving on to the next question, we were wondering if past savings could be used to meet the conditions of long-term residency. For the group that requests to check for the asset, the past saving in the in the banks, you can have make a bank guarantees about the saving within the one years, how much of the these will be count as your asset. But it cannot be count as your investments. We have the category for local investments, means you have to invest in Thailand, in three type of uh, investment, investment in the company, investment in the real estate investment in the government board. This one cannot use the past seven. So just to follow up to that question, so in this case, would it be either the investment or the saving you're referring to? I mean, the wealthy global citizens, there's two conditions. One million USD uh, in global asset. These global assets can be called as the saving, the past saving 
of the global asset. But there is another condition for the local investment. The investment that you have three types that I already mentioned, either in the government bond, in the equity of the company in Thailand, and also the real estate. That's what can be called as the investment in Thailand. So this past saving cannot be replaced, this local investment. And our next question is, are there any travel restrictions for the long-term residencies once they hold the visa? Not at all. You can have as many re-entry as you wish. And this is can also count as one-year report as well. So it's a benefit of the LTR visa holders. No restrictions for this travel. Our next question is regarding the legal obligations and responsibilities of the long-term residency holders. So is there anything in specific they're obliged to do? Not at all. Actually, to be a good uh, friend of Thailand would be a requirement. And most, most of them have to comply with the law of Thailand, like all Thai people and Thai citizens as well. So just to maintain your LTR qualification is the only thing that we request for LTR visas. And then follow up with the requirements, like when you report and everything. So this is the minimum requirement that we require. And um, just to follow up to that last point, so in this case, would these LTR visa holders be required to only report to the BOI? Actually, the qualification endorsement is is the responsibility of the BOI, but the, the law and regulation is still the immigration law. <clears throat> so to say this, the immigration is still the one who holds the, the monitoring and everything for the one-year report is still with them. And if you work under the LTR visa, the Department of Labor is still the one in charge of their work permit. And finally, our last question is, a lot of these LTR visa holders, they might have lots of questions regarding this, so what online resources can they look to for advice? Actually, we have information in the website, in the Facebook books, we have LTR Line officials, and we have emails. Uh, if you are in Thailand, you can do the walk-in and then can make a Zoom appointment with us. Also, definitely the, the team is very small, but we are growing at this moment. The BY also have the office abroad. So we have maybe 18 offices abroad that they're trying to help. And also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs abroad. They're also a good helping hand for, for giving the information to the foreigner as well. So as discussed, LTRs can bring a range of benefits to people wishing to stay in Thailand for a long time. And that pretty much wraps up our podcast. Once again, I would like to say a huge thank you to Kundina Pa of Hai Wong Se from the BOI for all of your expertise. I'm sure our viewers really appreciate it. So thank you. If you have any questions at all regarding what was just discussed on LTRs, please feel free to reach out to us at law at ilct.co.th or visit our website at ilct.co.th. It is highly important that you reach out to specific legal experts in order to get accurate information as the laws regarding this are always shifting. Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned for our next podcast.